Hey everybody. Nope, it's not the chicken talking. It's me, Carlos, and today I'm going to do a follow-up video on the rotisserie chicken in the Power Air Fryer 360. Last time I just took a brief video showing the before when it was already trussed, it was already seasoned, and then kind of uh, the after uh, once I pulled it out and then uh, carved it up. So this time we're going to go through a little bit more of an explanation of what exactly goes into setting up a rotisserie chicken on the Power Air Fryer 360. If yours doesn't look like this and you still have the rotisserie spit, it's the same thing. It's going to go in for probably the same amount of time. Check your manual, go online and see how long it needs to be on for. But overall, this is what we're looking for. Uh, chicken about this size. This is a five and a half pound chicken. Some people told me that they were doing like three pound, four pound. We're going to go to the max. We're going to go five and a half pound. And the reason I say the max is because comparative to the space inside of this oven, um, it's going to just fit and you want to make sure that you truss this chicken up nicely so that the wings and the legs aren't kicking those heating coils that are inside. So let's go ahead and get this unwrapped. Let's get it trussed up and then from there we'll season it. So first thing I'm going to do, I already cut a hole in the corner here. I'm going to dump out some of these juices. Don't need all that. Plus, it's gonna be a big mess. So, it's already plenty of juice in here. Let's get some of that juice out. All right, now let's go ahead and make some seasons up. You can put whatever you want on your chicken, but we're gonna do some garlic powder. We're gonna do some onion powder. We're gonna do some chili powder. We got some Italian seasoning, and of course, salt and pepper. Go ahead and mix it up. We'll go ahead and set this aside for later. Now comes the fun part. We're going to take our chicken. It's unseasoned. And we're going to truss it. So we're going to take this twine. And we're just going to wrap up the wings, the legs. And make sure it holds everything together nicely. So we're going to start underneath the wings. That way we got kind of an anchor for this twine. So we'll go under the wings. Hold those legs in. And then we're going to cross under the wing again. Hold those together nicely. And then we'll wrap this up. That way we hold those wings in place. You can do this any way you like, as long as it works. So we'll go ahead and put a knot in that. Now we're gonna come back to the legs. I'm gonna try and wrap these up. I'm gonna get one more piece of twine just so that way I can Get this all nice and tight for when we throw the rotisserie on it. Okay, this time I'm going to start with the other wing. I'm going to wrap it one more time. Get to the legs, squeeze them nice and tight. Try and pull this up. The goal is to get everything nice and tight. That way, when you turn that rotisserie on and start spinning, it's not going to drag the legs or the wings. So if you're watching and you've trussed up a chicken before, no judgments. This is only my maybe second or third time doing it and clearly this isn't any kind of a professional manner, but ideally, I just wanna get this nice and tight. All right, so make sure I don't have anything loose. Cross those legs up a little bit. And now we're gonna take 
a rotisserie spit. And we're going to drive this through. You want to make sure you get the center of where the meat's at. Because otherwise this isn't going to work. We're going to come out of the center of the chicken. And we're going to use the forks to kind of pinch into the meat. Try and keep it centralized. Okay. We want to make sure that we leave this edge and the opposite edge hanging over. That way it can lock into the air fryer and it can cook again without the chicken catching on anything. All right, so let's lock this side in. Check our balance. Of course, it's gonna slide out if you're not careful. Let's throw the other side on and see what we got. Lock that in. We might have a problem with that tail. That's all right, we're gonna throw it in, we're gonna work with it. All right, so for this, we're not gonna need any of the trays or racks. And now that we've got everything out of the air fryer, before we throw it in, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of olive oil on. You don't have to use this kind, you can use any kind that you want. And we're just gonna put a little bit on there, go rub it in, and that's gonna make all the seasoning stick. Plus it's gonna give a nice crispy skin. I don't know anybody that's against crispy skin. A little bit more. All right. But keep in mind the air fryer, as it's cooking, any of this extra oil, all the fat is gonna come off of this. So don't worry about using too much or, you know, if it's gonna be, you know, unhealthy or not juicy enough. So let's grab the seasoning that we already had. Go ahead and sprinkle some of that on there. Rub some of that excess off. Go ahead and flip it over. Get the other side. So we got the seasoning on there. Let's go ahead and pop this air fryer open. And there's even a setting on here for rotisserie, which we'll show you once we get this mounted in. We're gonna go ahead and take this rotisserie spit and we're gonna slide it into the rotating hook and on the hanger. And what you're left with is your chicken Unfortunately, mine's still a little crooked, but we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna let it flip around. So we've got rotisserie as one of the options. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna leave it at the number that it says it should be on. And we're gonna let it spin. So it looks like it's a little too close to one side. And that one leg's catching. So we're gonna have to reposition that. Otherwise, it's not gonna be a very good rotisserie. So it's gonna take some practice to get it in there perfect. Once you get in there right, and once it gets going, in about 55 minutes after the uh, preheat time, you have yourself a nice juicy rotisserie chicken. So let's check back in on it in maybe 20 minutes, see if we got any browning going on. Listen, auto juices sizzling. Let's hit the like button on here. You can see, we're already starting to get some browning. It's only been 15 minutes. We got about 22 minutes. Let's go ahead and hit that light. Oh yeah, she's getting crispy. Already. It is smelling nice in here. So, can't really tell too well in there, but we got a crispy chicken with only two minutes left.
Alexa, what's the internal temperature of a cooked chicken? Chicken is considered safe to eat when it has reached an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and check and see if our chicken is at 165. Sizzling. Okay. There we go. 165. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Cut into it and let's see if we got a juicy bird. And there you have it. That is a rotisserie bird. Took a little over an hour just so that way we can get to the right internal temperature. Nice and crispy. All the seasonings on it. So I'll put the uh, seasonings that we used, the instructions, everything down in the description. That way you can cook yours. Remember this is five and a half pounds and it just barely fits in there. But the important thing is, look at all that grease that fell out of the bottom. So not only did we get a nice rotisserie bird, but all that grease, and of course the extra seasoning. One last thing you need to do is remove this rotisserie spit from the, from the bird. So the easiest way is to remove one side and then pull everything through. But if you did like I did, you gotta make sure you unwrap that twine nice crispy skin beautiful one thing you don't want to forget that maze of twine that you do you got to undo all that that way you can cut into it that way I can get all the all that twine off that's amazing a nice chicken wing. Juicy, crunchy, perfect. And then what you're left with, nice juicy breast meat, nice and crispy skin, and lots of steam from all the juices that are still cooking. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you make one for yourself. Make sure that you uh, leave some comments below. Tell me if uh, you've got the same air fryer, you got something different. Maybe the uh, instructions differ a little bit or what kind of seasonings you use. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.